Good evening. I would like to call to order the April 13th, 2016 school committee meeting. The time now is 6.30 p.m. At this time, we'll be entering into executive section, session to continue discussion relative to collective bargaining with employee groups and individual employees and the strategy we followed in on continued ongoing litigation. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. So I have a motion. I have a second on the floor. This requires a roll call vote. Mr. Cutlass, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Dick, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Francis, how do you vote? Aye. Mrs. Bennett, how do you vote? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. So at this time, we'll be entering into executive session and we'll return shortly for our regular scheduled reorganization meeting. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is our annual reorganization meeting number 19. It is the April 13, 2016 school committee meeting, uh, which will be televised and recorded. Under the open meeting law, the public is permitted to make an audio or video recording of an open session at a public meeting. At this time, I would ask if anyone is recording tonight's meeting to please identify him or herself. Graham Foley, Tom Cryer. Great, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to have everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and could all of our invited guests start and lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I'd like to start off this meeting by congratulating Mrs. Chrissy Palomino on her re-election to the school committee and to Mrs. Arthi Bennett on her election first time to the Tuxbury School Committee. So welcome to both of you. We are looking forward uh, to working with you along with our other three members of the school committee. At this time, I will entertain nominations for the position of chairperson of the Tuxbury Public Schools. I'd like to nominate uh, Chrissy Palomino for chair of Tuxbury Public School Committee. So, are there other nominations? As there are no other nominations, the, uh, I, uh, the position is closed. I'm hearing none. Let's entertain a motion uh, for Chrissy Palomino to be the chair. The motion has been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of Chrissy Palomino serving as the chair signify by saying aye. Aye. That's 5-0. Any opposed? Congratulations, Mrs. Palomino. Thank you, Dr. O'Connor. I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues for um, the nomination and certainly the support of uh, continuing on as chairperson. So thank you very much. At this time, I would like to entertain nominations for the position of vice chairperson of the Tuxbury School Committee. Madam Chair, I'd like to nominate Mr. Dennis Francis as vice chair. Dr. Second. Okay, so I have a nomination and a second um, with the name of Dennis Francis um, to place the nomination. Um, are there any other nominations for the vice chairperson? Hearing none and seeing none, I will entertain a motion for the nomination for the, judge, for the vice chair to be closed. The motion already has been moved and seconded. On the name of Dennis Francis, all those in favor are signified by please saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Congratulations, Mr. Francis. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I will entertain nominations for the position of clerk of the Tuxbury School Committee. I'd like to nominate Arthur Bennett for the position of clerk of the Tuxbury School Committee. Second. So I have a nomination, a second for uh, Mrs. Arthur Bennett for the title of the uh, clerk for the Tuxbury School Committee. Are there any other nominations for the clerk position? Okay, seeing none and hearing none, um, I have a motion and I have a second for Mrs. Arthur Bennett on the name of Arthur Bennett. All those in favor, please signify by saying A. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The chair votes aye as well. That's another unanimous vote. Congratulations, Mrs. Bennett, and welcome to the Tuxbury School Committee. Okay, now that the reorganization meeting um, has been reassigned, at this time we will be taking a short break and we will be reconvening our regular school committee meeting at 7.15. We have a lot of exciting um, and a lot of recognition this evening, so stay tuned and we'll be back in a few moments. Thank you.
Good evening. I would like to call to order the April 13th, 2016 school committee meeting. The time now is 7.15 p.m. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. O'Connor. Um, first up is our recognition this evening. But thank you. We have a National Geographic e School Champion that we would like to recognize. I'd uh, like to call up Andrew Galicki. Andrew, come on up. Contestant at the uh, middle school. He went on to Elms College on April 1st. Elms College is in Chicopee, where he competed with kids from throughout Massachusetts. He represented the Tewksbury Middle School, uh, Wynn Middle School, exceptionally well. We're very proud of his accomplishments. And uh, Andrew, there were three questions that propelled you to the uh, winner's circle. Uh, I'm going to just check and see if the committee can answer those <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. okay. so, gray wolves were once wiped out of Yellowstone National Park, but have made a tremendous comeback in recent years due to conservation efforts. Yellowstone National Park is located in Wyoming, Montana, and which other state? I know. Mr. Cutlass, very good. In Harry Potter's, the book by J.K. Rowling, Harry catches a train to Hogwarts at King's Cross Station. In what major European city is that located? London. Thank you, Mr. Nick. London. Very good. Didn't he come? <laughs> He made that up, did he? He, he was ready to say Berlin. I know that. British Columbia is the largest city and host of the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup Championship. Name that city. Vancouver. Vancouver it is. Look at that. Pretty good. So I asked Andrew, what question did you uh, stumble on when you were out at Elms College? And the question was, uh, it was music-based, but we can't remember the type of music, so we're going to abbreviate the question. What Southeast Asian country was once subject to French rule? Vietnam. Vietnam. Oh, wow. Andrew, they, uh, these are going to take this. They, they're going to. Yeah, right. <laughs> we could be a tutor. <laughs> huh? He's not just a three face. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a proclamation for Andrew that we would uh, like to read. Mrs. Bennett, thank you. Whereas Andrew Kolecki through his performance on the National Geographic B Witness Assessment advanced to the state finals and whereas Andrew Kolecki did compete with distinction at the state level National Geography B on April 1st and whereas Andrew Kolecki distinguished himself as an excellent student and a member of the student body who upholds the ideals and values of the John W. Wynn Middle School, and whereas Andrew Bilecki has brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to himself, to his parents and family, to the school, and to the town of Tewksbury. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the expanding achievement, sorry, of the John Wynn Middle School student, Andrew Gillespie. Andrew, why don't you get a picture with Mr. Weir, and uh, we'll make sure that gets on camera. If anybody has a camera wants to get up there. I want to get my TV. <laughs> you can move it closer. Oh, I'm uh, <laughs> we'll cut you out. You're lying to me. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Our 
our next recognition of four students, uh, also from the middle school, that are off to Washington, D.C. next week. They are very excited about the trip. And we're even more excited that these four students uh, have entered a, uh, a, a contest regarding essays and Arlington National Cemetery. I'd like to call our four students up. We have Lisa Richard, I'm sorry, Emily Carmen, uh, Sophie uh, Eskenaz, Michael Fowler, and Gianna Raguchi. Gianna is going to read her essay for us, and like the other three essays, I believe you're going to be very touched by this. Please. Veterans are people who have served and given up their lives for the good of a nation. It is important to honor them because without their service, the citizens of the United States would not be living in a safe, strong, and independent country. Veterans are selfless and leave their families in order to protect the people of the country they love. They choose to fight to protect their country, even though they know the consequences that may fall. The sacrifice that these heroes make is too great for the everyday citizen to comprehend. They give up everything, sometimes even pay the ultimate price with their life. However, the most heroic and brave thing about them is that they choose to serve and fight for their country. They consider it a privilege, not a burden. All the brave souls who take on this leadership role deserve the respect, generosity, and love from those who are able to live peacefully in the land that the veterans protect. It would be a great honor and privilege for me to represent our school and present the wreath at the ceremony in Washington, D.C. My great-grandfather served in World War II, and I want to honor him by participating in this ceremony. Even though he came out of the war alive and well, he was a lucky one. Many of his friends and fellow soldiers did not make it home. I have heard numerous stories about how he was a paratrooper in the Army and served because he loved the United States. My grandpa influences how I think about soldiers and the sacrifices they make for us every day. I respect and understand them more now after hearing his stories. I would be honored to be part of this memorial in Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. to keep the memory and legacy of those heroic men and women alive. Proclamation, Mr. Francis is going to uh, read that proclamation. Thank you. Um, before I read the proclamation, as a Vietnam veteran, I thought that was absolutely tremendous. Thank you very much. Um, everything you said in there is absolutely true. It truly is an honor. You know, when you get to Arlington, it will be tremendous. This is a resolution of recognition. Gianna Raguchi, Michael Fowler, Sophie Eskenaz, and Emily Cowan was selected to represent Tewksbury at the wreath Lang ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. And whereas Gianna, Michael, Sophie, and Emily uh, entries into the eighth grade essay, co essay contest qualify them for this honor. And whereas Gianna, Michael, Sophie, and Emily essays impress the judges in this presentation of why it is important for us to honor those who have served and given their lives for this nation. And whereas Gianna, Michael, Sophie, and Emily distinguish themselves as an excellent students and members of the student body who uphold the ideals and values of the John W. Wins Middle School. And whereas Gianna, Michael, Sophie, and Emily have brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to themselves and to their parents and family, to the school and to the town of Tewksbury. So now, therefore, let it be resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the outstanding achievements of the John Wynn John Wynn Middle School students, Gianna, Michael, Sophie, and Emily. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So besides Arlington National Cemetery, what's going to be some of the highlights of the trip, do you think? Oh, we can't smile and answer questions. That's tough, I know. Look at Mr. Gilman over there, too. Yeah, everybody look that way, Mr. Gilman. 
Great. So what else is going to be the highlight of the DC trip? Don't tell me the bus ride. <laughs> <laughs> going to the Holocaust Museum. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Have you done any things online to look at uh, at some of the, the sites in the museum, you know, the, the Holocaust Museum itself? We're learning about it in English right now, yeah. and we're doing the project. Well, have a great time. It represent took very well. Make sure you get a big picture in front of the Capitol building. When everyone's sitting on the steps, it's a great picture. You'll you'll treasure it for the rest of your life. You can get that put into the too. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for coming. Parents, thank you. We, we appreciate it. And, and before you leave, we uh, have one more presentation. We have uh, three staff members from the uh, Ryan School that we are going to recognize this, uh, this evening. Lisa Richard, computer teacher. Sue Spolin, computer teacher. And Jen Rozowski, she's a science teacher. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, my good friend, Mrs. McGinnis. Mr. Hart is in the back uh, yes, there is. also. And Mrs. McGinnis is going to tell us a little uh, about the recognition for I'll our three staff down. members tonight. Yeah. And I'll have everyone sit down. Thank you all for having us. This is the Ryan School's first appearance since I've taken the helm as the principal. And I am excited to have learned of such a great opportunity to share the work that students do, and in this case, teachers first too. So what I did was I looked at the year and decided we were um, able to say that we are going to take part computer base this year. And part of the beginning of that happened with Jennifer Marzowski, so I'll go through each. But Mrs. Marzowski has worked very closely with her park pack, park, park, pack, park partner. <laughs> park partner. And you'll see her in here. And um, Mrs. Marzowski also put together a quick little slideshow just to show you what this is about. You can see from the title, it's the students and teachers play each other in basketball. I do not, so you will see, I'm not in there, but you'll see a lot of the work and the efforts that went into this. The reason to do it was to raise money for the HP streams that we would need to give to students in order to take part on them. So, take it away. You ready to take it away? Okay, student team, she can name every student, but she won't right now, but she could. The teacher team, you can see she did the uniforms with her partner who's coming up in here. So the students and teachers were clearly identified. Each team also had a coach, which turned out to be just as much fun as being a student on the team. The coaches enjoyed themselves. Students had cheerleaders, pom-poms and all, hair bows. They looked the part, they played the part, they did a beautiful job. The teachers also did hair bows and had pom-poms and they did an amazing job as well rooting for their team. And that was really the, um, some of the setup that went on behind the scenes. One of our favorite pictures is the fans that came. We were filled to capacity that night. We had people standing. We had kids, parents, relatives, all coming out to help us fundraise for this great cause. And you will see a free throw by the principal, <laughs> of which I throw it much like an underhand bowling ball. So that became, for kids, a great moment to see. I'm not so great at many things. This was the, the partner for Mrs. Marzowski. Her name is Jen Griffin, and you'll hear more about her at another time. I'm sure we'll have her up here now that I know I get to recognize people. But together, the PAC and one of our teachers, Jen, joined forces, and they were really the reason that this came to pass. We had many other people helping in all different roles, but it took the two leaders to really move this along and get it done. Uh, at the end, you can see we have some student assistants. They were also the behind the scenes part. They ran errands around as needed. They took some of their own time from lunch and recess to help support Mrs. Murzowski's efforts and Jen Griffin as well. One of the biggest parts was the giveaway. Uh, Mrs. Marzowski contacted the company where we originally bought our HP streams, and she asked them if they would donate one for that night. And it was probably one of the more exciting moments of the night. As you can see, the student that won is Andrew Delapiana. He's proudly taking a picture with his father and sister, and it was a great uh, giveaway to really draw people into that event. We raised just over $3,000 as a school, which covers the cost of the streams themselves. The cart's always a different cost. Everyone that's done budgets know that. But we're so grateful that we were able to really get that extra money that was well above and beyond anything that we had planned. And you can see some great photos of her kids using those HP streams now in, in class, but they'll also be used as part of our uh, park testing. So 
Thank you again, Mrs. Brzozowski. We're very happy that we could have you here tonight. Let me just click over. We have Lisa Richard is our fifth grade computer teacher. She's been in the district previous and has returned. Sue Spolin has been with us many years now. And when we talked about getting this initiative of doing Park Online, uh, we talked a lot about what the technological needs would be. So far beyond and far uh, in depth, my scope of work, both of these ladies were able to come up with all of the things that we would need to know. I made a short list today of the things that they have done in just many ways, things far beyond anything I would think of. They attended technology planning meetings. They did troubleshooting with the hardware and the software in our own building. They provided training to all staff members, all students. It's a required component. They also provided makeup sessions for anyone that was absent, including tracking every person that was absent. So we have virtually 100% of every child and staff member has reached their training or their meeting with myself or Bill Hart tomorrow. Um, they developed a testing schedule for us to figure out how are we going to fit in our 585 approximately students into these testing sessions. They continue to function as test coordinators, test trainers, test administrators, and very importantly to us, while we test, they'll also be IT support within the building for our school. And I am entirely grateful to both of them as well as Mrs. Mrozowski, and that is what brought me here tonight, thinking about we really wouldn't be here if it weren't for those key players in our building. Um, a special thank you goes out to uh, the IT department as well, and Brenda Regan and Sherry Matthews, who have continued to support all of the efforts that we've been making. Many little moving pieces to it, although it doesn't sound it, there are a lot of little parts to it. We did bring you, and I'm not sure we'll have a chance to walk you through it, but I was great. I was very pleased when Lisa said she would put together a PowerPoint. Here's an example of one of the questions. If I had my pointer, I could show you. I'm missing it, though. I don't have my pointer. But I could show you. This is what a student will read online. I'll show you the next slide. This is what they do. They drop and drag their information. It's a different style of testing completely than anything paper-based. Many students have experienced these types of um, tests and assessments in their classrooms otherwise, maybe just not in this exact format. We also did a math uh, question, and by we I mean Lisa did this particular piece. But you can see the math symbols on the sides. Students have to manipulate that on the computer. So their classes have also provided beyond their, their assigned curriculum all of the extra tools of the trade for doing part online. And as you can see, this is an example of kids taking it. If you can see the big X's, one of the tools they're teaching the kids is to use the strikeouts. They can start taking out answers they know won't fit or work. So there are different tools available for online testing. And lastly, you can see a big giant group of kids saying, we're ready for park testing. We are, I think we're quite ready. We're provisioned well in the building. We've had many meetings and uh, we're ready to roll out on April 26th. And I'm pretty excited to see the results of that. So I thank you all for taking the time and honoring these very important people. And we, we have the ubiquitous proclamation that we're going to make. <laughs> Whereas we will share that with you. <laughs> Come on over here, ladies. Just careful of the court. Sorry. Hello. It's Shrek and three lovely ladies. Special uh, recognition. Whereas Lisa Richards, Sue Spolin, and Jennifer Mrozowski are dedicated educators, dedicated educators at the John F. Ryan Elementary School, who brings 21st century learning to the students at Tuxbury. And whereas Lisa Richard planned and taught all the fifth graders at the John F. Ryan Elementary School the tools needed for computer-based park testing, provided teacher training and served as test coordinator. And Sue Spolin planned and taught all the sixth graders at John F. Ryan School tools needed for park testing, provided teacher training, produced a testing schedule for the building, and served as test coordinator. And Jennifer Mrozowski co planned uh, and was the master of ceremonies at the teacher versus students basketball game to raise funds for the new laptops at the John F. Ryan Elementary School. And whereas Elisa, Sue, and Jennifer exemplify the qualities inherent of a leader and progressive educator, whereas Lisa Richard has brought, Lisa and Sue have brought great pride, recognition, and honor to herself, to the science department, to the John F. Ryan Elementary School in the town of Tuxbury. Jennifer 
which you have brought great pride <laughs> and recognition to honor yourself, the Ryan School Parent Advisory Council, the John F. Ryan School, and the Town of Tewksbury. So now, therefore, be resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the many efforts of Lisa Richard, Sue Spolin, and Jennifer Rodas. Finest, and we're really excited about Park going online, and uh, I think uh, we're in good hands uh, with all of you making sure that this is going to happen. So thank you. And on that note, we're going to take just uh, a quick break. We'll let everybody exit unless you want to stay for the rest of the meeting. You're welcome to stay. We're going to be here about another hour or so. Uh, if not, you can just head out that door, grab your kids, and. Uh, no, you can't be right here. No. no. And thank you all for coming. Thank yes, you. Thank you. All right. So this time, when they're getting ready, I'm going to send it right over to Mr. Petrie um, for our a student uh, support our high school report. Thank you. The Students Against Destructive Decisions are hosting the dating boom tomorrow night in the auditorium. Tickets are $3 at the door. The student Council attended their spring regional conference last week where Kelsey Dunn was elected as the 2016-2017 UMass President. They are currently in the process of planning their teacher appreciation week as well. Best Buddies will be bowling at Walmaset Lanes on Wednesday, April 20th with their members and on April 28th will be attending the TMHS Theater Company's production of Beauty and the Beast with a pizza party in the evening brief before the show. Um, and the Theater Company's Spring Musical is set for the 28th to the 30th of April. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $7 for students. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Petrie. Thank you. Okay, Dr. O'Connor, will we have the presentations this evening? Right, we have uh, two presentations this evening. The first, I'd like to welcome Mr. Jerry Sutherson. Good evening, Mr. Sutherson. Good evening. And here we have Mr. John Lyons, our Director of Community Services. These two gentlemen here representing the Lions Club and the Rotary Club. And would like to just briefly talk to you about the upcoming 5K fun run. Okay. Uh, hopefully you have in your, uh, in your books a copy of the flyer. This flyer talks to uh, the 5K road race that we're going to be doing on Memorial Day um, on May 30th, Monday, May 30th. What I can tell you from a historical point of view is that about three years ago I was approached by uh, Mr. Mark Ginsburg, where I work at the Tuck Street Country Club, and he asked me to put together a road race, a uh, 5K road race. The first year we ran the had the road race, we raised uh, just over $40,000 for the Warrior Project. This uh, past year, just about a year or so ago now, we, ran, we organized the road race and we raised just over $33,000. And those, mo those monies were distributed to Strongwater Farm and the 9-11 Committee here locally. Uh, Mr. Ginsburg decided that he didn't want to be responsible for the road race anymore. So me and my big mouth, uh, I, now that I'm a member of the Tokesbury Alliance, and Mr. Lyons is a member of the Tokesbury Rotary, you know, don't ask me how to explain that. But anyway, long story short, we came up with the idea of the Rotary and the Lions teaming together to organize the road race in support of local charities. And you'll see on the list, there's a whole list of, a whole big list of local charities we support. The two things you need to be aware of is first of all, we, between the Rotary and the Lions last year, we gave $7,000 to the uh, community pantry. And the other thing you need to be aware of 
between the Rotary and the Lions last year, we gave $14,000 in scholarships to the Tewksbury students. So this is an effort on the part of the Rotary and the Lions Club to increase our monies so that ultimately everybody in the community will benefit. So from my standpoint, we're just asking for the school committee's support and hopefully we can encourage parents and students to participate. It's, it's, it's really a good take. It's 5K road race. Ideally, you don't have to run on the road. You get to run on the car path and you get to stay off the road. And if, you, if you're not a golfer and you've never been out to see the, what I consider one of the most, more beautiful golf courses in the area, you get an opportunity to see the, the golf course as well. So we're here looking for uh, the school committee support in that, that effort. The, uh, the Rotary Club and the Lions Club historically um, have never really worked together. And this is really uh, a paramount example of how teamwork and community organizations can work together for the betterment of their target audience, which in this case is the town of Tewksbury and high school students in general. So uh, I know that the Rotary Club's given out over $100,000 worth of uh, scholarships. Uh, we purchased uh, all kinds of things. We support the Hats Off Pro program uh, for high, Tewksbury Memorial High School students, which tomorrow is a Hats Off Day at the Rotary Club. So uh, uh, it's just a great time. It's a great, uh, it's a great moment that uh, Tewksbury will see. It's the third annual. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning on Memorial Day. Uh, it only takes about an hour to do it if you really uh, want to walk it. Uh, it's it's going to be a beautiful day for sure. And uh, we really encourage everybody, uh, parents with kids, parents, real runners, um, to come out and, uh, and really, truly enjoy the day and support to explain uh, these two great organizations. And the only thing I'll add that I forgot, and it's $30 to register, and what that will give you is obviously, obviously an opportunity to support the different charities, but uh, over and above that, you get a race shirt, and you also get, we're putting together, Loretta Ryan, who a lot of us know, is putting together a gift bag. So we're gonna have a gift bag and a race shirt for the first 300 people that register for the race. And if anyone would like to sponsor, uh, sponsorships are available. You can contact Mr. Sellison and myself, uh, and we can kind of go over the uh, sponsorships and what that entails. So. Hey, thank you both for coming this evening. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Lyons or Mr. Sellison this evening? Mr. Francis. I'd just like to say it's, it's great to see the Lions of Rotary working together, and uh, I think it's great. I, I participated the last both years of the it's, it's a great day, it's a great event, it's a great cause, and uh, we appreciate all the work that both uh, doing a little hats off to uh, the Rotary Club. We tasted Tewksbury uh, last week. It was a great event. And again, more money for our, our students. Um, thank you very much, and uh, looking forward to it. I hope it's a record turnout, and I hope we top what we made two years ago. Thank you, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Any other comments? Um, I just have one question. So where did you say the proceeds um, this year will be going towards? I mean, I know you have the flyer, but the money that's raised this year, I know you talked about previous years, but where is the money raised this year going towards? So that'll be determined by each club. Um, okay. We target our money to uh, scholarships in general, uh, to increase that number that we traditionally do, uh, and also to support uh, programs that are within the community. For instance, uh, the Tewksbury Rotary Club just purchased uh, 50 tables for the pavilion at Lo uh, Livingston Street. So we like to do more of those kinds of things, and the more funds we have, the more things we can be able to do. Speaking for the Lions Club, I think our main focus at this point is more along the lines of uh, more scholarship money. So uh, that's pretty, pretty much what we're focused on right now. But we do, we do last, uh, I don't know how many years, probably over the last 10, 12 years, we've given the ball like 60 to 70,000 to the country as well. So that's another one of our big charities. Yeah. I mean, on behalf of the school community, I know we've always said that you know, we are so fortunate to get community support, whether it be from our PACs right inside our schools, which you saw earlier today, people getting involved, certain organizations like yourself, the Rotary Club, and the Lions Club, and we certainly appreciate that. And we appreciate you coming this evening and, and providing the opportunity 
for people to see what you do and the great things you do. Um, I hope I can go again this year. I went last year. It is a beautiful um, walk or run. I'm not a runner, so um, I did a little bit of both last year. Um, but it, it is a, it's a great, great event, and um, I encourage everyone in the community to come out and support these two wonderful organizations that do so much for our students um, in the school. So it really is a great partnership, and we appreciate you coming here this evening and, and allowing us the opportunity to work with you again. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Okay, Dr. O'Connor, the next presentation. Sure, next we have the Ryan and Lynn uh, Schools handbooks. Our two principals are here. This is McGinnis, Mr. Weir. They're going to walk you through a very brief PowerPoint presentation. Much like our elementary schools, there's an attempt to standardize uh, handbooks from levels to levels, and I think you'll see that reflected here this evening. Thank you. Um, Mr. Weir and I will be walking you through this. Uh, much in the spirit of the way the K-4 presentation went, and I thank them for going first. I thought it went very well, and they've given me a few tips on things to do tonight. The first of which is to make note of any errors that we've caught ahead of time. So if and when you read page 8 and you come across the phrase that says, no horseplay or rough housing is forbidden, we will be working on the word. <laughs> Just for the record. That has been an ongoing giggle at the Ryan School. Uh, amongst those that have proofread it, including Mr. Hart and Mrs. Fowler and Mrs. McLaughlin. So if you see any of them, remind them, no more play is for So as you can see, uh, we share the same goals in aligning uh, this uh, handbook uh, with the, our elementary team. Our goal is being to build a common language across the district. Uh, they demonstrate shared expectations, collaboration, vertical articulation, uh, stakeholders' input such as school council and staff, and now uh, your input, and to support the transition between the Ryan and the Win. I uh, just wrote some examples from the uh, vertical articulation uh, from some of the edits from the Win handbook. Uh, we, we found out that we were the only school that was currently adhering to a one through three uh, ranking for effort and behavior in every other school in the district one through four. And so we've adjusted that, so you see that would be the type of edit that we would make this year in our handbook. Uh, in addition, we want to be on the same page with our attendance and coding for our attendance uh, uh, record on Aspen. That is an important one to align throughout the district. And uh, Judy will speak a little bit to safety drills, uh, some updates. And those are the big uh, sort of edits that we made to the beginning of the She'll speak a little bit to the safety drills on the slide. Um, and just as a side note, this was also the project for the Ryan School Council this year. Uh, it was my second year as a principal in the building, and it was something that we felt did need some work, and it did happen to line up with K-4, was also working on theirs, and um, we used much of the wins in doing so, so I'm very grateful to all of them for all of their hard work that made mine much easier, I must say. Similarities across K to 8 is what we also looked at. We have similar sections. They're not all identical. There are developmental differences amongst each of the um, sections of grading, but they're not all the same. Formatting is also very, very similar. Wording on many topics may be identical or very close to that. Uh, emphasis on student behavior and academic expectations is also something that you can see is becoming more uh, in line with one school to the other. Policies and procedures as well, they should be. They're either state or federal laws or district policies that we've all um, included as often as was developmentally appropriate. I think that really speaks to the differences in the handbooks. They're really based on developmental and, and particular uh, school differences. For instance, the ride has a recess period, so there are certain rules uh, that need to be delineated in the handbook that relate to recess. Uh, and as you get to the middle school and you're getting ready for high school, there may be certain academic expectations and moving forward in course selection and so on for the high school that may be installed out in the handbook. Uh, and again, for instance, the WIN has a Friday detention, so that's in there, uh, it's detention suspension, and that doesn't exist in the running right now. Uh, so, so that would be something that would be different in the handbooks and those types of items. K-4 also included this, but the newest information for us and the most uh, important information in our estimation at this point is the, ad the addition of the ALICE protocol. It's already in the high school handbook. You can access it on the Tewksbury Public Schools website as well. But we've all added that into ours, and we've also locked down the language around a variety of different uh, protocols in terms of school safety and security. And we did feel that that was something consistently that we needed to be doing so that when parents hear terminology, whether it's from a principal from K to 4, or from myself, or Kristen Vogel, or John Ware, that we're using the same terminology. And we felt we really, as a district security team as well, 
you know, hats go off to them for alerting us to these different changes and making sure that we're aware of the wording and what's important around it. And the last, uh, last slide refers to the uh, idea brought forth from the elementary schools, which is a great idea of consolidating the sign-off forms. Uh, and we're looking at the best way to do that, that consolidate all the information on one sheet and even possibly provide it digitally uh, next year. So uh, that's a great step forward, I think, and it really reduce a lot of paperwork uh, organization. So last week, we did say it would be brief. We are happy to entertain any questions. I don't think I'll speak for myself and John. There's been lots of conversation around just also looking at wording regarding any updates and policies that we weren't aware of. So if there are any further changes, we'll be sure to send that to Gail Johnson, Dr. Connor's office, so that you're aware of any last and final changes. But if you have any questions, suggestions, we'll get um, Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to open it up to my colleagues at this point if anyone has any questions. Um, maybe we'll start with Mrs. McGinnis, the Ryan School first in that handle, and then we can move on to Mr. Winter secondly. So if there's any um, questions or comments um, regarding the John F. Ryan School? Mrs. Bennett? Yeah, um, I, I noticed this, that you reduced the homework time for the sixth graders. Um, I actually think it's a good idea. Could you elaborate on why that was made that change? I can't. I looked it up in the school committee's policy handbook, of which I don't know that anybody had opened it, and we've had a changeover in the last few years. And I had thought to myself, before I cut, match, and paste everything, some homework needs to be done and see if policies had changed, and in fact it had changed. And that will be reflected in starting uh, effective the beginning of the school year. So that was a result of the school committee policy change. Thank you. Well, yeah. 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 Um, for the chain of communication, is there any way to put a date on there? Because obviously we revise it probably every year because there's new administration that comes on or new We usually update the names uh, before we go to the point and we send that out in August, September. Uh, we could certainly put the date right on the bottom. It's, I'm, I'm surprised it's not on, on there now. I can see we can easily do that. Back. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bennett. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I just have a couple of little things, but I will actually, if it's fine with you, Mrs. McGinnis, I just email you like a couple of right. suggestions over. There's no reason to take time for that tonight. Sure. Um, and I would like minor things about um, easier contact information, things like that, you know, putting right on the front page, you know, little simple things like that. So I will, I will give you an email tomorrow. Wonderful. All right, thank you. All right, let's go over to uh, the Wayne School now, um, Mr. Ware. Does anyone have any questions or concerns with um, the Wayne School? Mr. Francis? I tell you, Mr. Concern, it's probably the same statement I made when we had the elementary. Also, is I think any time a sign-off sheet can be simple for the parents, it makes, up, it makes everybody's life a lot easier. And I like that idea, and eventually just doing it online, I think is the way to go. Right. So continue to like that idea in all these presentations. A great presentation, and it's good to see the collaboration between the two schools. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? And Mr. Ware, I would say the same to you. I just had a couple of things that I noticed. And actually, I picked them up from the presentation last school committee meeting, too. So I will actually drop those off and send them to you. Great. Thank you. Um, and with that being said, I'd like to thank you both for your collaboration and for updating your handbooks. Now they're ready to go for the upcoming year. And we appreciate all the work you put into that. And please extend that to the staff that helped you as well. well and thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Okay, moving right along to Citizens Forum. Um, is there anyone here this evening um, wishing to speak? Okay, not seeing anyone. Moving right along. Um, our clerk, Mrs. Bennett, will present our meeting minutes. I'd like to move the March 23, 2016 regular meeting minutes. Second. So I have a motion, I have a second on the floor to approve the March 23rd, 2016 regular meeting minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'd like to abstain. And I have one abstention, and the chair votes aye as well. So that would be a four vote with one abstention with Mrs. Bennett. Thank you.
Our clerk, Mrs. Bennett, will now present our payroll this evening. I'd like to move the payroll period ending March 24, 2016, in the amount of $1,198,563.33. Second. So I have a motion and a second on the floor to approve the payroll period ending March 24, 2016. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have one abstention on that one too. Chair votes as well. Again, that will be a four yes vote with one abstention with Mrs. Bennett. Thank you. I'd like to move the payroll period ending April 7, 2016, in the amount of $1,173,454.51. Second. So I have a motion and a second on the floor to approve the payroll period ending April 7, 2016. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'd like to abstain as well. Mrs. Bennett abstains as well. Chair votes aye as well. Again, that would be a four approval and one extension. Thank you, Mrs. Bennett. Next up, we have our consent agenda. Does anyone wish to take anything off our consent agenda this evening? Okay, not seeing anything. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept tonight's consent agenda. Second. So I have a motion, I have a second on the floor to accept the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Um, Dr. O'Connor, are you going to be speaking in terms of some of those donations um, during the superintendent reports in the consent agenda? Yes. Okay, great. Then we'll keep moving right along. And actually, over to you, Dr. O'Connor, for the superintendent and staff reports. Okay, I have a few items. I'd like to share with you upcoming Beauty and the Beast High School PMHS play April 28th, 29th, and 30th uh, at 7 p.m. There's also a matinee for the younger crowd. That's on April 30th at 2 p.m. I can tell you that.